Our fifth president was James Monroe. He served from 1817 to 1825. He was born in Virginia on, 18, on April 28, 1758, and he married Elizabeth Courtright in 1786. He was a U.S. Senator from Virginia, and he was a governor of Virginia. He served as the ambassador to Great Britain. He was the Secretary of State and Secretary of War. So he was quite experienced in political matters, and he died in 1831. Now, uh, we're getting to the group, to a group of men who really weren't that involved with the revolution, the American Revolution. So we're getting away from the founding fathers as our presidents. Um, and that's going to start to make a, quite a change in our country. Uh, so James Monroe, when he came to be the president, the nation was very peaceful. It was peaceful and profitable. Wars with England and France had died down. And there was only one political party that ran the government. That party was the, is the Republicans. So Americans, they were basically happy with the government because they were successful. And the economy was growing. Americans were prosperous. And all of this period of time during Monroe's presidency is called the era of good feelings. People were happy. And uh, there just weren't a lot of big problems in the country. <clears throat> now, Congress was led by three, mainly by three outspoken men, and then all of their followers would vote along their lines. So John Calhoun, he was from South Carolina, and he supported policies that favored the South. Daniel Webster was from Massachusetts. He favored policies that supported the Northeast. And Henry Clay from Kentucky supported policies that favored the West. All three of these um, men and their groups were uh, loyal to their section of the country that they came from because the sections had different interests. And this idea is called sectionalism. Sectionalism is loyalty to your local interests. And sectionalism will, it, it began to, uh, it's always been a part of our country, um, but in this period of time, it was extremely important because it's the, it, it's kind of the kickoff to the Civil War, where as parts of the country started to get out of touch with other parts of the country. The North uh, Northeast doesn't understand the requirements, the needs of the South, and the West is kind of left out to dry. So sectionalism, that loyalty to local interests, it causes stress and problems. Um, during this time, Henry Clay, though, he proposed what is called the American System. It's a program designed to make the United States self-sufficient and independent of the world. Uh, we saw being entangled in other, in other countries' business. It caused problems, just like Washington had warned. So um, we tried to make our country more self-sufficient. We did this by putting tariffs or taxes on imported goods to help American businesses. So um, international goods would cost more than American goods, so people would want to buy American goods because they're cheaper. Uh, new roads and canals, canals were built to improve transportation, and the government created a new national bank, all to allow people to have access to more money, to um, give people the feeling that our country is strong and growing. Between 1812 and 1821, five new states we entered the United States. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, five new states, Louisiana, Indiana, Mississippi, Illinois, and Alabama, all entered. And notice what I have there for designations, free state and slave state. By this time, people were already arguing over whether or not to allow slavery. And the... Uh, slave issue would carry these people into Congress, and these states into Congress. So the Senate was split 50-50. Half supported slavery, half did not support slavery. And with that threat of allowing or not allowing slavery was always the threat of secession or seceding, which means um, disjoining the Union, leaving the Union. Um, let's see. In 1820, Maine entered as a free state, and that was going to upset the, the balance. 
in this country, uh, the balance of slave states and free states. So the Missouri Compromise was proposed and followed. The Missouri Territory in 1819 applied for statehood. They wanted to enter as a slave state, and so that meant that slavery was legal in the state. Now, the northern states objected because there'd be one more slave state, and the free states would lose power in Congress. And the southern states, they wanted this because then they could expand slavery into new territory. By this time, many, many states, many people in you know, much of the northern part of the country, they wanted to prevent slavery from spreading anywhere into the new territory. So the Missouri Compromise said this right here. Under the Compromise, Maine enters as a free state and Missouri entered as a slave state. So the slave and free states were balanced. But slavery was allowed south of the 3630 north latitude line, but not allowed north. So there's a line drawn that you can see here, right here, that no slavery is allowed above it, but slavery is allowed below it. So that for a while kept um, the balance between slave and free states as it was balanced. And hopefully, people hoped that it prevented the spread of slavery. Uh, between 1810 and 1824, Spain lost control of its colonies in, America, in the Americas. So the United States benefited from this because they took over much of the uh, Spanish territory in Florida. Uh, President Monroe began a policy designed to end European influence and involvement in American affairs. And... Um, in 1819, the U.S. paid $5 million for Spain, or to Spain for Florida and acquired it in the Adams-Onis Treaty. Now, the next huge uh, piece of information that you have to know for President Monroe is called the Monroe Doctrine. It was passed in 1823, and it really defined our foreign policy, the United States foreign policy, for the next 150 years. Uh, so President Monroe announced a new policy that the U.S. government would follow. The policy is known as the Monroe Doctrine, and it says that the U.S. would stay out of European affairs. We wouldn't get involved, just like we had been saying we wouldn't be involved for years. It also said that Europe was to stay out of the Western Hemisphere, or out of North and South America. And it said that the U.S. would oppose any European attempt to colonize the Americas. So it was kind of like a warning shot over Europe. It said, stay out. And Europe, well, it was up to them. They could either push it, they could try to get, uh, to try to take colonies and fight the America, Americans, or they could follow um, the warning and stay out. So for the next, like I said, 150 years or so, um, the Monroe Doctrine really did keep the the European powers away from North and South America. They were afraid to fight another war, afraid to fight this powerful country, America.